Um, okay, well, welcome everyone uh, to Carpentry Con at home. My name is Ariel Deardorff, and I'm just going to get us started with some logistics before we pass it over to uh, Dr. Carrie Jordan, our fearless leader. Um, so we are using Crowdcast today. So I just wanted to point out some features. Um, on the right side, you can see our chat. Please do say hi to us in our chat. That helps us know that this is actually working. Um, at the bottom, we have an ask a question uh, feature. So if you want to ask a question at any point, please do use that and it'll help us track um, the questions that we have so we can answer those. Um, and this is being recorded. So at any point, if you lose the call, you can always come back later and watch it. And we will be putting a link in the Etherpad. We do have an Etherpad for this session. Um, so we'll put a link for that in the chat. And we do ask that you um, go there and just sign in there as well so we can keep track of everyone who joins us today. Um, and then the last thing is that as with all kind of carpentry spaces, both virtual and in person, we are um, using a code of conduct um, because we just wanna make sure that we're building a very inclusive and welcoming community for everyone. So I'll put a link um, in the chat as well, but just in brief, we wanna to remember to use inclusive language and be respectful in our interactions on the chat and in our questions and everything. All right, so now I will um, pop out and I will let Christina talk a little more about Carpentry Con and introduce our speaker today. Thanks, Ariel, and hi, everyone. Um, we're so glad that you're joining us, uh, whatever time of day this is for you. Um, and welcome to Carpentry Con at Home. Um, we're very excited to present um, many sessions over the next seven weeks. We had so many great um, submissions from the community and um, the schedule is out, you can take a look. Um, and so we do hope that you'll put some of those on your, on your calendar, um, fill out the registration form and um, plan to attend and grow over the next uh, couple weeks. Um, so we're gonna kick things off today with our sort of opening keynote. And it's my pleasure to introduce the one, the only, Dr. Carrie Jordan, uh, Executive Director of the Carpentries. Carrie came to the Carpentries from a background in engineering and research studying self-efficacy of underrepresented engineering students. She joined Data Carpentry about four years ago to lead assessment efforts, um, kind of continued that role with the Carpentries and expanded it to include uh, equity and inclusion efforts. And she became the Carpentries Executive Director this spring in April. So um, if you saw her blog post last week, you got a small taste of some of her plans and dreams for the Carpentries. And we look forward to hearing more about her vision, uh, both today in this talk and in the coming months. And with that, I'll turn it over to Carrie. Thank you, Christina. And welcome to Carpentry Con at home. I'm Carrie Jordan, Executive Director of the Carpentries. It is my pleasure to deliver the opening address for Carpentry Con at home. To say that 2020 has been challenging is an understatement. The unprecedented challenges caused by the coronavirus pandemic and the ripple effect of racial injustices have made their way around the globe. Despite these challenges, I find hope in scanning the Carpentry Slack and social media accounts reading our blog posts, and attending community discussions. I find hope in each and every instructor, helper, maintainer, learner, committee member, and champion. I find hope in you. Our community engages daily in the struggle to democratize data and computational skills. We engage daily in the struggle to redistribute power to individuals who have been marginalized and most of all, to engage in and solve problems through collaboration, equity, and access. The individuals who make up our community are truly the most important part of our organization and our strongest resource. So take time to give yourself a round of applause. And I wanna see some claps and some hands in the chat. <laughs> all right. Through our programs, we are working to dismantle the broken power structures and resource distribution that negatively impact marginalized communities around the world. We are empowering diverse groups of people to work with code and to work with data. 
for that reason and in line with Carpentry Con at Home's theme of growing inclusive computational communities and leaders, I'd like to talk to you about the Carpentries and how we built our foundation to build global capacity with three building blocks in mind that will continue to shape the way we grow inclusive computational communities. Now, I would be remiss not to take a moment to thank the Sloan Foundation and the Moore Foundation for their generous contributions to our Carpentry Con meeting. I must also thank the Carpentry Con Task Force and Planning Committee for their tireless efforts over the past year. When we realized we could not hold Carpentry Con in Madison, Wisconsin, the task force immediately put together a plan to hold a virtual event that would be accessible for our community. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Usu, for chairing the task force and to each subcommittee member, core team liaison, and all of the presenters. You truly made this event happen, so let's get started. My earliest childhood memory is the first day of kindergarten. I attended Fleming Elementary School on the east side of Detroit in Michigan in the United States. The school was a short walk from my house, maybe three blocks or so. The building was one story, but there was an annex that was attached to the building. And this annex separated the little kids from the big kids. Now I could not wait to be a big kid and take my classes in the annex. There was something mysterious about the annex that I could not quite put my finger on. But I needed to make it through kindergarten first. I wasn't a big kid just yet. On the first day of school, I was so excited. New book bag, new school supplies, new socks with lots of ruffles on them. I was going to take full advantage of all my teacher and the school had to offer. There was one problem though. I was late on my first day. <laughs> Now, I can't remember why I was late, but I was late, late. When I walked in the room, I noticed everyone had already been seated and begun working on the day's lesson. And the way the chairs were positioned, I couldn't just slide into my seat unnoticed. I walked into the room and my teacher stopped what she was doing, turned to me and shouted, who's that girl coming in here late? My teacher's words give me nightmares to this day. Her words stuck with me so much that I have a tendency to show up to meetings, church, rehearsals, dinner parties, and yes, even Zoom calls five to 10 minutes early. I made a decision that day at four years old, never to be late for anything ever again. Now, there are several persons credited for this mantra, but it goes a little something like this. Early is on time, on time is late, and late is unacceptable. That experience on my first day of kindergarten was one of the building blocks of the foundation that I stand on today as executive director of the Carpentry. And that building block is be punctual. As I considered that memory and others that have shaped me and built my personal values, I began to reflect on the Carpentry's building blocks. The Carpentry's vision is to be the leading inclusive community teaching data and coding skills. Our first lesson program, Software Carpentry, was founded on three building blocks, feedback, gratitude, and collaboration. If you don't believe me, I'll prove it. Maya Angelou said it best when she stated, I have great respect for the past. If you don't know where you've come from, you don't know where you're going. So I took a stroll down memory lane and read some of the earliest blog posts of Software Carpentry blog. I noticed from these posts that feedback, gratitude, and collaboration were right there from the start. Nearly every blog post ended with one of the following calls to action. Timely feedback would be greatly appreciated. 
Comments and feedback would be greatly appreciated. As always, comments are greatly appreciated. Comments and criticism are very welcome. As always, comments and corrections are welcome. Comments and criticisms are invited and appreciated. Suggestions would be particularly welcome. Feedback, gratitude, and collaboration. These three building blocks are the foundation we stand on today. These building blocks are what helped us release our equity, inclusion, and accessibility roadmap, create our vision statement, our nine core values, and our strategic plan. Feedback, gratitude, and collaboration are what has helped us run over 2,300 workshops in 61 countries. Feedback, gratitude, and collaboration are what has helped us train over 2,400 volunteer instructors, develop 33 lessons, and teach more than 56,000 learners. We are thriving, and we must continue to use these building blocks, feedback, gratitude, and collaboration to identify accessible pathways for involvement and engagement in the carpentries, whether for an individual looking to contribute content or teach, or a potential supporting organization looking to provide financial resources. We truly value all contributions. My vision for the carpentries is to support global capacity for building inclusive computational communities of leaders who embody the carpentry's values and run programming that suits the needs of their region and their local community. But what does that look like and how do we prepare for it? If you know me, you know I live by several mantras, <laughs> but one of my favorite mantras is plan, pilot, pursue. With that framework in mind, I'd like to share the state of our organization and how we're building global capacity together with feedback, gratitude, and collaboration at the foundation. In addition to navigating the pandemic in the second quarter of this year, we made significant progress developing our business operations, documenting strategic collaborations, and refining several community resources, including our maintainer onboarding curriculum and the Carpentry Connect kit. This planning has put us in a position to onboard more maintainers, collaborate with diverse organizations leading the global open science movement, and support regional facilitation of community events. This quarter, we will make progress on several compliance and operations goals, including implementing best practices and privacy management. Additionally, we will make progress towards the Carpentries Incubator and Carpentries Lab programs, thanks to the generous support from the Moore Foundation and the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. We're planning to develop a membership onboarding program and launch a Help Wanted page for lesson contributions. Now let's talk about some of our pilots. As I mentioned earlier, it's important to me that we create infrastructure that will allow local and regional communities to support and sustain themselves. I envision the Carpentries developing the infrastructure and workflows to support a host of regional coordinators who will coordinate workshops and build community based on local and regional needs. We have learned so much working with our regional coordinators in Canada, the Nordic countries, Australia, the UK and New Zealand, and are currently piloting a strategy to engage Carpentries community members regionally in Southern Africa. Now, I'm sure you've noticed we've moved our workshops online. That was a huge undertaking for us and it proves how important feedback, gratitude and collaboration are. It took the efforts of our entire community and core team to move our workshops online in a way that did not compromise our values our teaching pedagogy and our brand. What makes me extremely excited and extremely proud 
is that we're seeing similar results in our post-workshop surveys for in-person workshops versus online workshops. This quarter, we are piloting our first continuing education module for instructor training to help instructors who are currently teaching move their teaching to online workshops. Rounding off the year, we will see several pilot initiatives, including the Community Facilitators Program. The first module in this program will help us do an even better job of collecting and incorporating the feedback that we receive from our community. I truly cannot wait. Finally, let's look at what we've been pursuing. Thanks to support from the Institute of Museum and Library Services and the California Digital Library, we have the opportunity to see five memberships to new library communities and consortiums this year. In seeding those memberships, we will explore a consortium model framework. Imagine our impact if there was a carpentry's community in every library. In addition to that, we are pursuing an opportunity with the network of the National Library of Medicine to teach online workshops and library carpentry's extended curriculum. Now, most people would say this is the boring part of what we're pursuing, but I, I actually find it quite exciting. We are pursuing revisions and updates to our bylaws. And I want to give a huge thank you to our executive council for their diligent efforts on this work. Improving our governing documents will make it easier for you, our community to form committees advise lesson programs, and propose improvements for the way our organization is governed. And finally, both the community development and infrastructure teams will collaborate on a design project for accessibility on the Carpentries website and our lesson template. Now I could go on and on about the work that you are doing and the ways we are building community and building global capacity. But instead, I invite you to learn from each other over the next seven weeks. The Carpentry Con at home schedule is filled with skill ups, technical sessions, and opportunities to connect regionally. And to give you a little teaser, we are closing the conference with a fireside chat featuring none other than our open size community manager, Steph Butland, and the Carpentry's Director of Community Development and Engagement. Sarah and Jambi Rono. Now the building blocks that I'd like to give you as you spend time enjoying Carpentry Con at home are feedback, gratitude, and collaboration. Give feedback to the presenters and instructors and share your experiences on the Carpentry Con at home Slack channel and on Twitter using the hashtag CarpentryConHome. Extend gratitude to yourself for making space to attend this event and to others you interact with. Make it your business to identify new opportunities to collaborate with a fellow community member. Oh, and don't be late, be punctual. <laughs> now, before I let you go, I'd like to leave you with something to consider by way of a quick poll. My consideration question is, as you participate in Carpentry Con at home, let me put the poll up, here we go. As you participate in Carpentry Con at home, which of the following building blocks will you intentionally put into place? Feedback, collaboration. Oh, my poll didn't come up. Let me put the poll up, my apologies. There we go, you should see it now. So as you participate in Carpentry Con at home, which of the following building blocks will you intentionally put into practice? feedback, gratitude, or collaboration. And I'm already seeing the poll move. I see lots of gratitude. I see lots of gratitude. Oh, I see now collaboration is winning. <laughs> I love to see that. Wonderful, wonderful. This makes me so happy. Thank you all so much for attending our opening. And I'll take questions. I think I have time to take questions, right, Christine? Yep. Yeah, so if folks have any questions for Carrie about what she's talked about or just in general, um, 
you can go to uh, ask a question on the bottom of the screen next to people polls ask a question and, and type of will not be the last time you have the opportunity to ask questions <laughs> we have plenty of time over the next seven weeks during carpentry con at home so like i said use the chat follow us on twitter my personal twitter is dr carrie l jordan so dr K-A-R-I-L-J-O-R-D-A, and it's very long. Um, so there's plenty of time for you to ask questions if you don't have one. Oh, looks like we have some questions. No question, just wanted to be grateful. Oh, that's so awesome. I'm so glad you're here. Do you have resources to recommend that you are using to update your governance documents? Absolutely. And I actually, I would love to somehow get Lily's information um, to share. Can I put the links on the etherpad? Perfect, because we we yep. use a few resources from uh, the nonprofit quarterly for updating our governing documents, um, but it, it truly is a collaborative effort between the community, the executive council, and our core team as well, deciding what information should be in the governing documents in order to make decision making a little bit easier versus what decisions are community based decisions. So there are certain decisions that from a governance perspective, you know, we've already outlined our mission, our vision. And so we want to make sure that our governing docu documents articulate that information. But there are certain things that we don't need to have, you know, a rule or a regulation for in our governing documents. So We've used the nonprofit quarterly and a couple of other resources to make those updates. And I will put links to the, in the etherpad for the keynote. Okay. My pleasure, Lily. Oh my gosh, my personal favorite of the core values. That's not fair. I have so many. <laughs> okay. Oh, I would say my personal favorite it, oh man, this is such a hard question. I think it's going to be value all contributions. And the reason I say that is because coming from a background where I will tell you, you all have heard me speak about this before, my, my imposter syndrome sometimes sets in and I sometimes wonder, am I the right person for you know this particular uh, call to action? Do I have what it takes to contribute in this way? And one thing that I realized working with the carpentry, even even early on working with data carpentry, was that everything that I contribute matters. It can be the most, in my mind, basic contribution or recommendation, but it's appreciated and it's valued. And so I, I have that feeling and I want everyone in our community to have that feeling. We have a lot of novices coming into this space who feel like, I don't know how to code. I don't know how to contribute to a lesson. What on earth? Why am I here? And so I want to create space for those individuals to truly understand that whatever you contribute to the carpentries, whether it is running a community discussion once a month, if everyone contributes what they have, it makes a huge impact on a global scale. So I think that's going to be now, if you ask me tomorrow, it might be access for all. But today, <laughs> right now, value all contributions is my favorite. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, yeah. thank you all so much. Thanks, Carrie. I wanted to uh, do one final plug. Um, we have a feedback form, it's in the chat and also in the etherpad. Um, and so again, your feedback building block is very welcome. Um, and I just want to do a quick plug for uh, Lily, who's on this call, is doing a session on Wednesday on frictionless data. And also on this call, Kelly and maybe some other folks are doing a session on online teaching. Those are happening this week. So check it out. Um, and yeah, we look forward to seeing you around and uh, put things on your calendar. Invite your friends. Ooh, and if you want to help host sessions, sign up. Um, I Message us, Slack, just get in touch somehow and we'll hook you up with the right information. Um, we'd love to have 
some more contributions in that area of people um, really just helping the main presenter by um, keeping track of the Zoom room and that kind of thing. So um, thank you so much. And thank you again, Carrie. Uh, oh, this is really you. great opening for um, the next seven weeks. So applause all around. All right. Thanks, everyone.